the Autism Awareness Month special of Words and Beats, the Larissa G Show. I will pick up where I left off in the last episode and continue sharing with you my childhood journey on the autism spectrum through music. Today's segment is titled Life is a Train Ride and Autism Journey, My Dream of the House of Discovery, and it is related to the second poem in my illustrated book, which I started sharing with you last time. dedicated to the theme of loving, accepting, and supporting children with autism and the role of parents and professionals in helping bring out their hidden gifts. Place gifts in their hands to bring out their virtue, weaving the web of friendship and love. Let's now travel back in time to my Cornerstone 2016 World Autism Awareness Day concert. For the sake of continuity, I'll recap by sharing part of the piano selection accompanied by a narrative. The piano composition and narrative describe my early life starting from the day of diagnosis on the spectrum at age two to the point of self-discovery when I chose my path in life. presentation from my senior recital I must share with you. I was honored to host a special guest, Dr. Ira Cohen, who gave his concluding remarks after I performed my original selections. I feel very lucky that he attended this important event and shared his perspective in his speech. Not only is Dr. Cohen a notable figure in the field of autism, but he also played an instrumental role during my childhood and school years on the spectrum.
We'll now hand over the microphone to our guest speaker, Dr. Ira Cohen. for this in Yiddish, it's called Nachas. Um, and uh, did, you, did you think this was going to be like when you first came to see me, what, what you were going to experience now? No. Uh, I know Lara since she was about three years old, and um, uh, I think what, what was very apparent with her and, and why she's made the progress that she's made is that she comes from a very dedicated family who clearly love and support her. And they wanted to find uh, intervention that was efficacious. And uh, my uh, guidance, I suppose, was basically to direct them on what to do and to check and see how she was doing over time. And uh, she made quite a bit of progress. And uh, I think we can see that now. Uh, it's amazing. Thank you. You're, you're incredible. Um, as far as uh, autism, um, it. it um, the numbers were about what you said, about one, uh, actually one or four per 10,000 cases, and, and the numbers have gone up, I think, largely largely because uh, we recognize it better, but there could be other reasons as well. And um, the other thing that has changed a lot and gives me hope for the future along the lines of what you are suggesting is that way back when, when I first started, autism wasn't even recognized as its own disorder. It was considered a form of schizophrenia. And it was only in 1980 that it became recognized as a developmental disorder, a developmental disability. And um, this was around the time of what was called the deinstitutionalization movement. Prior to that time, if a parent had a child who had a developmental disability, they were put into warehouses, um, never to be seen again. And the idea that you would have these people in the community was frowned upon, and when the the institutionalization movement happened that caused a lot of stress in the community. That's, you don't see that anymore. Things are changing and attitudes are changing. And I think people are recognizing autism as a spectrum, as they see, and we have people who have incredible abilities that need to be capitalized and we need to accept them. And then we have the other that Lara just sang about, of kids who have clearly more handicaps and need much more support. And um, the researchers have made a lot of progress in the area. But I think the, research, the reason why we're seeing a lot more research is because of parents, like Lara's parents, because they were the ones who pushed the researchers to get involved in this kind of intervention in this time, in trying to find out what's causing this, this, these conditions. So um, it was because of them that the attitudes have changed, and because of them, there is now funding for this type of research. So um, without the parents, this couldn't be. And by the way, we no longer blame the parents for causing autism, right? That used to be the idea. Uh, and that's in this country, but they're still doing that in France. Okay? Just to let you know that the world is still a, a mixed up place. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is a delight to be here. And uh, I couldn't think of any other place I'd rather be with than right now and be with you. Thank you. be screening an animated music video featuring the last song in its entirety from the concert footage you just saw titled My Dream of the House of Discovery. You also heard excerpts of the musical composition that describes my childhood path on the spectrum. The full musical composition is available for download on my website and I recommend listening to it while you read the illustrated narrative in this book. As you witnessed in the previous episodes, the stories and poems in my books are conveyed not only through music, but also with the help of colorful illustrations. 
I do so in order to make the messages and concepts in my books attractive and approachable to both adults and children. Because this poem was very personal to me, I illustrated it myself, and here's a glimpse of my illustrations in this book. And now it is a good time for me to screen the animated music video of my song, My Dream of the House of Discovery, a snippet of which you heard at the concert. I dedicated this song to children living with autism around the world. Deep in the forest, there's a beautiful place where magic is swaying and waltzing with grace. Magic that's
let's leave a trace Let's stay on this path And let's leave a trace I hope you enjoyed my music video. This song is based on my sort of mystical vision of a special place where children with autism are loved, accepted, and appreciated. A place which is a safe and encouraging environment conducive to nurturing the special gifts of children with autism by those who surround and support them. It was inspired by my volunteer experiences with children with autism during my high school years. It was also inspired by my clinical rotation during my music therapy education, particularly at the New Beginning School for Children with Autism, where I was under the clinical guidance of an amazing music therapist, Mr. John Foley. I'm really grateful for the time we had together, and together we did amazing and fun things with the children. The song was also inspired by my desire to give back everything I received during my journey. And now, a little magical moment. The snow is actually a lot stickier today than it was yesterday. Ye yesterday it was so smooth and so beautiful, and the run was really awesome. Here I am in the beautiful forest of the Adirondack Mountain region in Lake Placid, New York. My family and I enjoyed cross-country skiing in this neck of the woods ever since I was a little girl, and I'm thankful to my parents who introduced me to beautiful places and cross-country skiing as a fun extracurricular activity. And this forest is as beautiful in the summer as it is in the wintertime, and in the summertime it is really great for hiking. And this beautiful scenery in part inspired the setting for my song and my poem, my dream of the House of Discovery, also known as Deep in the Forest. Wow, just to admire the beautiful snowfall on the trees. And when I look at them, I start to think of animals, bugs, butterflies, and many different imageries. This is just amazing and breathtaking. I'd also like to mention that my poem and my song were inspired by my visit to an internship site in Sullivan County of Upstate New York during my music therapy education, which is a residential and learning center for children with autism. And that sparked the idea for me to open a music studio where I could teach music to children with autism and other special needs the Discovery Music Studio, where music is accessible to all. And there, I will be filming the Autism Talk Spot segment of today's show. Welcome to the Autism Talk Spot of Words and Beats. In the previous episode, you met James Williams, who introduced me at my World Autism Awareness Day concert in 2016, and today he's here as a special guest on the Autism Talk Spot. Thank you, James, for hailing all the way from Chicago to join me today, and thank you as well for being a dedicated friend and collaborator. James is an autism self-advocate who spent the last decade presenting on autism awareness and related issues throughout the U.S. Thank you, Lara. I'm glad to be here. So, since today's episode is about bringing out special abilities and gifts in children with autism, let me ask you, how and when did you start playing piano and singing? Well, even when I was really little, I was always the first one to run up to the stage and grab the microphone. So I started taking piano lessons when I was eight as an attempt to copy my older brother. Then when I was 11, I auditioned with a lot of enthusiasm, I must say, as a workhouse orphan in the play Oliver, which was staged by my hometown community theater. Ah, yes, Oliver. I saw an adapted theater troupe put on Oliver many years ago in Florida. 
That's a great show, isn't it? So together with my older brother, we spent five summers acting in this theater. And one day on a long road trip, my mother noticed that I sang the entire score of Oliver on pitch. And after that summer, I like literally begged my mom to sign me up for voice lessons so I could be part of the theater club in my high school. And from there, I have to say I never left the stage, performing, acting, and singing. So this is how my gifts were uncovered, and I'm so grateful that they were because I really love what I do. And what about you, James? Did your relationship with music start in childhood? Yes, my relationship with music did start early on. My symptoms of autism exploded when I was 18 months old. Although my family has retrospectively concluded that I showed autistic symptoms from birth. I had many meltdowns and struggles in early childhood, and I was formally diagnosed with autism when I was three years old. Around that same time, my parents discovered that listening to music calmed me down. It got to the point where I constantly needed to have music played around me. So my parents gave me a portable red cassette player for this purpose. I especially enjoyed music by the Canadian children's artist Rappi. Oh yes, I heard of Rappi. Did you learn to play any musical instruments growing up? Although I have enjoyed listening to music, my autism caused some limitations when I attempted to learn how to play musical instruments. Growing up, I attempted playing the piano, the cello, and the guitar. Although these attempts enabled me to learn how to read music, memorize musical pitch and key signatures, fine motor coordination limitations made it difficult for me to properly play these instruments, as I lacked the ability to properly move my hands to manipulate them. So how did you get into playing the recorder? I was still determined to find an instrument I could play. I met my granduncle at the age of 13 in 2002, and he introduced me to the penny whistle, also known as the tin whistle. He showed me basic techniques, and I discovered that the same fine motor deficits that made the piano, cello, and guitar difficult did not hinder my ability to play the penny whistle. Several days later, I performed live with the penny whistle at the nursing home where my granddad lived. Two months later, I transferred my penny whistle skills to the recorder, and I have been playing the recorder ever since, giving concerts at various settings as a soloist or collaborating with other musicians and dancers. an awesome story, James. Let's head upstairs and throw a little performance for our viewers at the Live Music Corner. Today on the Live Music Corner, we will entertain you with an instrumental medley of famous hits, and I asked a special guest to join us on the guitar, my mother. <laughs>
words and beats. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a like and comment below. Catch me on the next episode titled Dreamers on Air, dedicated to young adults on the autism spectrum. See you next time! Together, can it be the heart?